In this final video of Unit 15 for transcription, we are going to look at um, the regulation of gene expression. So once again, another higher level topic. This is covered in topic 7.2 of the syllabus. Um, and, and the idea is we're now moving towards um, looking at how proteins are going to actually be made um, when we move on to the next unit in, trans in translation. And, and so I, this is more of a it's a it's a general topic it's it, it's not really um it's related to transcription in the sense that all genes have to go through transcription and they all go through um differing levels of regulation of their gene expression um but this is a it's a, it's a generalized topic that is it's studied on a very general level um and so you can look at it um in this case we're going to look at it very specifically to transcription and what happens within the transcription process but it's important to understand that this is happening at all times um, that genes are being um, turned on or turned off or they're being uh, the, the level of gene expression is being regulated at all times um, and so it's, it's important to understand which molecules are involved and which sequences or how the sequences of the DNA that are uh, that are uh, that are involved here how they're actually involved in the regulation of this gene expression so in terms of in terms of what resources, so if you have access to the Google Classroom, um, the, what you're going to be using is um, both documents are um, labeled the same. So regulation of gene expression. Uh, one is a, a PDF. and the other is a PowerPoint. The PowerPoint is a little bit more, it goes into a lot more, it's more in depth. Um, I would recommend going through it, especially um, the first few slides as they go through, they add a little bit more context in terms of uh, the different types of regulation. And it and actually, um, it sort of uh, explains the concept of regulation um, in, in a little bit more detail. But these notes here, the PDF version of it, I think um, they provide enough detail here that uh, will give you um, a nice idea of how, what's happening in, in regulation. So when we talk about the regulation of gene expression, we're looking at, um, so the regulating portion um, is looking at the control of the timing. And so this is the, uh, we're looking at how gene expression and then uh, gene expression itself um, is looking at the making of the proteins. This is what we've looked at already, um, how uh, pr uh, genes are transcribed, eventually translated into proteins um, from, uh, from genes. And what we're going to focus on is what actually controls the timing. And, and that regulation is really, really important to ensure that um, genes are turned on at the right time, that genes are turned on at the right level at the right time. Um, and so it's not just a matter of that the right gene is being transcribed and translated. It's also a matter of um, at the, what moment in time and how much um, the gene is actually being turned on. And so why this is occurring, um, and so this he, the why is right here. So it ensures the appropriate genes are expressed at the proper times. Um, so these are uh, some of these, the most important ones here you can look at are the developmental genes. Um, developmental genes are highly regulated and they have to be um, because they, they are important in ensuring uh, that the stem cells that are actually going to differentiate um, so in terms of uh, developmental genes, I'm just going to write it here, uh, developmental, and if you can go back to unit five, when we talked about um, stem cells, uh, so developmental genes are highly regulated. Um, and so they have to ensure that they are turned on at the right time and in the right amounts and in the right combinations to ensure that the right types of structures are made um, and the right cells are made um, if, and you don't have any issues in terms of the development of the different structures that are going to be produced uh, from the embryo to the fetus. 
And over time, um, you have gene regulation that, help, that will also help the organism uh, respond to its environment. Um, and so gene regulation ensures that proteins are made um, only when uh, the proteins are necessary. And so this could be um, based on uh, reproductive cycles. Um, so depending on the reproductive cycle, you might have certain genes that are turning on at specific times. Uh, you might have, um, so again, we've talked about developmental um, genes, um, but it also, you know, it could just be things like um, the macro environment, the micro environment. You could look at uh, microbiomes, your diet, um, lots of different things that can affect um, gene expression. The first thing that we're going to look at is how, um, at a molecular level, how DNA is or the genes are regulated. But then we will look at um, something called epigenetics, um, which is sort of the um, which is the relationship between how genes are regulated with the environment. And so that'll be sort of the ending of this video. And we'll look at how um, when we move away from uh, what our DNA and what our genes are or how these molecules are actually working, um, how external factors actually affect our gene expression. So the first um, the first thing that you have to uh, think about here, um, and, and so the place where this happens again, um, the, in terms of um, in terms of the timing here, it's it's a little bit. This happens before transcription, um, but I'm the reason why we teach it at the end though is so that you have the context of what has already happened in transcription, and so it's really important to understand that transcription has already happened, um, and then we're adding this this one last lesson on to ensure that this is occurring just before uh, transcription um, has started. And so the first thing and the, the very crude um, regulation that has to occur is actually turning on or turning off a gene. And so what, what that is actually being controlled by um, is these are sequences of DNA um, that are found um, either on the gene itself or just prior to the gene and usually prior to the gene. Um, that will either um, turn on or turn off um, gene expression. The ones that turn on are called the enhancer sequences, and so they turn on gene expression. And so this will be essentially, this will be our go, Whereas the silencer sequences are the ones that will turn off um, gene expression. And by turning on, I'm actually going to put this in brackets right here, that it actually increases the rate of transcription. So it's not necessarily that it, it has to go from zero to one. Um, it has to increase. There ha it has to show some increase in the amount of transcription. So it increases the rate of transcription. Whereas the silencers, um, not just going from, say, level one to level zero, completely turning it off, uh, just by reducing the amount of gene, uh, uh, the, uh, reducing the rate of transcription also is a function of the silencer sequences as well. And so it can uh, decrease the rate of transcription. So either way, it doesn't necessarily have to completely turn on or off. It, it can be sort of a gray area um, and it can just reduce or increase um, the level of transcription from what we would uh, denote as a normal amount. And so so in, in reality, we sort of look at these as being um, as they turn on or off, but they actually sort of um, we're, we're OK in terms of if, if an enhancer will just increase the, the rate of transcription and a silencer sequence will decrease the amount of transcription that occurs. And so in terms of the positioning of them, um, if you have a, 
um, if you have sort of a, a, a DNA double strand, and remember at this point, it is a double a double stranded DNA. It's a really bad one, but that's okay. Um, if the if the gene is this portion right here, so that's the gene, um, the enhancer or the silencer would be here. So this would be the enhancer or the silencer. And so they'd be found just before um, the actual gene uh, begins. Now, these are actual specific sequences that are found within the DNA itself. Um, the next level of DNA, um, sort of gene expression, or the regulation of gene expression, um, are actual molecules that are involved here. And so the first of these molecules, um, and these are all proteins, so just keep this in mind that these are proteins now that we're looking at, um, and not DNA sequences. So these are proteins that will attach, like literally attach to the DNA um, near the gene, um, and it makes the DNA either more or less accessible for the DNA or for the RNA polymerase. So remember, we're, we're looking at this prior to transcription and we're looking at either increasing or decreasing the rate of transcription. And so if you remember back to a couple of videos, we're looking at the process of transcription, RNA polymerase um, is the enzyme that actually performs transcription. And the first of these proteins that will bind um, is what we call a transcription factor. Um, and very loosely speaking, um, this would be um, an activator. And so either you, you'll often see, um, more often than not, we just call them uh, transcription factors. Um, and these are, these are actual protein molecules. These are proteins. Uh, that make the DNA uh, accessible for transcription. So it's made it more accessible, accessible for transcription. Let's bring an I there. And so in reality, again, just like the enhancer sequence, a transcription factor will also increase the rate of transcription. Whereas, and so again, so we can write this as a go, whereas the re a, a repressor protein um, is very similar to a silencer sequence, um, and this is a protein that is going to physically block um, um, the RNA polymerase. It keeps the DNA uh, inaccessible for transcription. And the way you can think about this is that it's, um, this is a physical um, block uh, not allowing RNA polymerase to bind. And so the, uh, the effect of this is that you're decreasing uh, just like a silencer sequence, you're decreasing the rate of transcription. And so this would also, once again, be uh, something that's going towards the stopping of the DNA um, uh, or the, the, the stopping of the transcription uh, process, so stopping of the um, actual production of um, uh, of the protein itself. <laughs> now, the third type um, of RNA, or sorry, uh, DNA, uh, or the regulation of gene expression, um, is actually to do with the physical um, coiling of the DNA. 
And so we've talked about this in terms of DNA replication. Um, you have uh, DNA itself um, is found in this structure right here. Um, in terms of so this this structure right here is the nucleosome. So this is what we call uh, the nucleosome complex. The nucleosome, if you remember, is the DNA plus the histone proteins. Um, and so this entire complex is the stable um, sort of um, uh, structure that allows for the DNA to be coiled together and it compresses the DNA so that it can fit into a very small space. Um, DNA itself, if you uncoil DNA, DNA is a very large molecule. It is um, end to end, it, it, it would not be able to fit within a nucleus, but being able to wrap it around a histone complex like this, um, it's able to fit inside a nucleus um, of all of our cells. And so um, in terms of the histone complex or the, uh, or the nucleosome, you have, it is a, uh, I'll do this in a different color, they are eight histone proteins um, that have with two coils of DNA wrapped are all around the histone proteins. And all of this is held together um, by the methylation of the DNA. Um, a methyl group um, is simply, a, it, if you think back to unit 10, when we looked at some of the functional groups, um, the methylation of DNA is just uh, having extra CH3 groups on the DNA itself. Just by adding CH3 groups, um, causes the histone or this nucleosome complex um, to sort of be shut off or closed. And so the nucleosome is tightly packed together. And what this is doing is that it's physically blocking um, the RNA polymerase from actually binding and starting transcription from occurring. And so if, if you have this DNA, it's going to, the DNA is, it's just going to, it's going to, it's going to bump into the histone proteins and you're not going to be able to, um, you're, you're not going to be able to have uh, any transcription that occurs. And so this methylation, um, allows for, um, sort of a physical block that can happen, um, a phys physically block the DNA from transcription. Now what happens or the way to loosen this up um, is to um, acetylate, uh, um, it, uh, acetylate this um, molecule. And so acetylation is just the addition um, of an acetyl group. An acetyl group is a, um, it's a CH3 group um, that also is, has a double bond O to it. And so histone acetylation uh, will allow um, the DNA to then be less, it's not going to be tightly packed anymore. And so um, this is going to, um, so acetylation reduces the coiling um, and allows DNA to be more accessible for transcription. So it's really important to understand what actually controls the tightly bound structure of the nucleosome um, and, and what, what functional group is actually involved in binding to the histone molecules to actually loosen this up. And it's a very similar process when we looked at DNA replication, but in DNA replication, it was a specific enzyme that came in and actually reduced the coiling of the DNA. So it was, it was DNA gyrase that came in and actually reduced the coiling. In this case, you're gonna have just an acetyl group that comes in and it actually reduces the coiling of the of the nucleosome and this will eventually allow for the RNA polymerase to be able to bind um, and be able to allow for transcription to occur. 
the last bit um, and the last um, type of uh, regulation, and this is something um, I'm not, if you, you may have to take these notes on a separate piece of paper. Um, the last bit of um, regulation is actually to do with the environment and how the environment affects gene expression. What we call this, um, and this is a huge branch of, um, of biology called epigenetics. Um, epigenet it's the impact of the environment on um, gene expression. This impact of the environment um, can be based on, um, this could be due to any chemicals oh, and or uh, environmental factors. that affect gene expression. Um, so some of these factors that can be involved here um, include, um, for example, um, a low body temperature can cause uh, the pigment in Siamese cats um, it, it can cause the pigment in 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 Siamese cats um, due to the differing transcription of that pigment gene and so because and it's because of the the impact or the effect of that low body temperature that's changing the uh, the the, uh, the expression of that specific gene. So it's due to transcription of the pigment gene. Um, you can also have um, effects of uh, sunlight. So sunlight can also cause um, production of melanin. So sunlight can influence the increased production of the melanin gene. So uh, it will increase the amount of melanin protein that's produced by increasing the transcription of the melanin gene. By increasing transcription of the melanin gene. Um, and one of the other things that we've, we've noticed, and this is due to sort of more unfortunate um, studies that have occurred, but we do have the data for this. Um, identical twins, um, technically, um, they have nearly identical DNA. But in the past, what has been done, and, and, and this is uh, just based on lax um, ethical concerns um, of the past, which is something that is not done now um, nowadays. Um, but but even even sort of if if twin like we talk about them specifically in terms of twin studies that were that were that were conducted in the past in the fifties and sixties um, or earlier even. Um, but even nowadays, if you have identical twins who are not absolutely living the same exact life, um, those identical twins are going to be exposed to different environments, and they're going to their their genes are going to slightly um, ex be expressed differently. But the biggest um, the way we saw this was that it was during those twin studies, and we have the data for this, showing how much of a difference that can occur, even though they have the same genes and they have the same DNA and they have the same alleles. Um, but because they were separated and, and put into two different, say, for example, socioeconomic areas or, um, uh, you know, different parts of the world even or different parts of the country, um, because they were over their lifespan, they were exposed um, to different uh, environments, and this in general, um, the transcription of their genes is going to occur differently, and that's because of the different environmental factors. So they're exposed to different 
environment uh, and they express genes differently. Now, one of the things, and, and in terms of epigenetics, this is this is about as much detail you need to know um, in terms of what happens. Um, there, it's a it's a whole separate section of um, of genetics that you can study, and you can look at how the environment affects um, affects gene expression. We've talked about how um, chemical modifications of DNA, so acetylation or methylation, um, acetylation and methylation, and these are just additions that you want to add on here, and I'll add them here. Um, acetylation and methylation Um, may be passed on to the offspring. So there is a possibility that specific types of uh, regulating the nucleosome um, structure or the different ways of uh, looking at um, uh, uh, looking at coiling the DNA at, uh, and regulating it in that, in that sense, um, the amounts of acetyl groups and the amounts of methyl groups, they may be passed on to... Um, the offspring when the when genetic material is passed now most of the time, and this is something we'll look at later on when we actually uh, look at genetics, um, most epigenetic uh, modifications, though, um, will, be, um, will not be passed. And so most epigenetic modifications remain just with the individual themselves, and they get erased um, from the DNA during meiosis. And so this is during the process where you're producing. So this is the pro, uh, this is the production um, of the sex cells. Um, but there is about a one percent, about one percent of about one percent can be passed on to the offspring. And so in terms of the environmental conditions or whatever the environmental conditions may lead to some sort of a modification of the DNA, um, there is a possibility of that being passed on to the offspring, but it's not always a guarantee in terms of it being passed on. And so the epigenetics are often just an effect to the individual themselves, um, but that's not to say that, and this is where a lot of the research is happening at the moment, is to see whether how much of, this, uh, of these modifications are actually passed on um, to future offspring and how much of a permanent effect they have um, to offspring um, to the future generation. So up up until this point, um, so this is that is it for regu the regulation of gene expression. And that's the amount of detail you need to know. You do need to know uh, the differences between the enhancer and silencer sequences. You need to know the difference between activators and repressor proteins, and you need to be able to talk about how the uncoiling and the coiling of DNA in the nucleosomes um, allows for transcription or trans or to occur or be blocked and then how the environment is affecting um, gene expression. We will, in terms of the environment, look at different factors later on when we add in um, different topics. We will talk about them more specifically um, later on in the future. Um, but up until this point, this is the amount of detail that you need to know when it comes to the regulation of gene expression. So up until, so this, at this point, um, this will be the end of the unit 15 material on transcription. Um, the next unit that will come up will be uh, looking at translation. We now have mRNA that is now modified. It is now uh, completely ready. It is now in the cytoplasm and it can now be translated into protein. And that is going to be the next step that occurs um, during translation, and that's going to be the next uh, set of videos.